All right, good morning, guys. It's 9.30. Let's go ahead and get started. Today, we are going to be doing a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about what you should be seeing and how you're turning in work. And then once we do that, um, I'm going to go over the mask, the red death. So let's look at screen two here. All right, so here's class. This is our meeting now. This is a view of what our conversations look like. As you can see, not only are we meeting now, uh, the daily check-in came out, our vocab unit two came out. All the assignments for this week should have hit about 9.05 this morning. Uh, so don't be freaked out when you see a whole bunch of these. This is for the week. Um, let's look at the assignments. So this is a dummy account I have in here so that I can show you what it looks like. Uh, these are all past due. They only show past due if you haven't turned them in. If you have, it'll show under completed. But once you do complete something, hit this right here, this little turn it in. It should just say turn it in for you unless it's late. So let's look at the four through six study guide. So when you hit turn in, that just sends me a message that says, hey, this person turned it in. It's ready to be graded. Um, you don't have to do that for me to see your stuff but it just makes it easier on me. I'm still gonna be looking at all the assignments anyways, and sometimes when I look at the assignments, I can tell whether or not it's done, uh, and I'll put things like, nope, it was blank in the comments so that um, you know that I looked at it. So let's go over the assignments that are gonna be due this week. Um, chapter four through six study guide is going to be due. So you have to read all those those three chapters this week. This is your poem. We're going to be going over that probably tomorrow. It's a very interesting poem uh, by a man named E.E. E. Cummings. He does a lot of uh, line stopping and crazy enjambment and spacing. So hold off reading that until we can read it together. Um, this is just I'm reminding you to get your PDF book and study guide. Uh, if you haven't gone there yet, this has both the full text and the study guide here. Um, I'm just going to give everybody 100 points for that. But this is where you find them. The Monkey's Paw, that's one of your short stories this week, along with Mask of the Red Death. Um, it's not showing up on here, but it's showing up online. So uh, we're going to be going over that today. Once again, remember, hit turn in. Also, let's go back to posts. Daily check-in. Guys, you got to do these check-ins. Um, I have 10 on Thursday and like 8 on Friday. So we got to keep up doing those daily check-ins. They're going to add up, and I don't want to be that. Have this be the reason why you're not passing. You're going to be getting feedback from me on those. I'm going to start going over them again uh, today. Usually it doesn't take me that long. I'm going to try and get everything graded and back to you by tomorrow just so you know where you're at. Uh, we have a couple different things that didn't pop up. Let's see, where is it? There's the monkey's paw. Uh, vocab test, we did that Friday. Let me check on mine. I think something's missing. Give me a second, let's look. Vocab unit two should be there. Oh, there it is. When is that scheduled? Oh, <laughs> that's going to be coming out soon. That's why it's not there. All right. So um, during this lecture sometime right now, you're going to be getting a quiz for night. Um, chapters one through three. And let me show you what that's going to look like. So it's a link to this place called Quizzes. If you've never done it, it's very easy. It's going to ask you to put a name in. Um, I already have one done, so that's not going to work on that one. Let's do it here. So your quiz will look exactly like this. It's going to pop up, and it's going to say, your quiz's name is... Put in your first and last name. If you put in something funky or another username, I'm not going to know who it is, and uh, I'm not going to give you credit. 
You can turn off music or off the sound effects. I don't care, but you get to take this twice. Okay. The best uh, score you get is going to be your final score. If you want to look over your study guide beforehand, go ahead and do so. If you want to review chapters one through three as in your groups, go ahead and do so. Uh, but this will take you to the game. So let's select the theme. And here we go, start game. So it's going to count down and it's going to give me, I think, 45 seconds to answer each question. When the German soldiers first arrived at Siget, most people thought they were cruel and evil. Okay, pick one of these. That's your answer. Once you pick, it'll go to the next one. Two, which of the following was not an edict the Nazis imposed on the Jews? So I'm giving you a sample on two questions here. Okay. All right. Don't believe everything that you read. So that's how you take a quizzes. What will happen is I can go into the quizzes after and get a report of your score. I'm going to drop that into uh, the points. I'm going to put your percentage in just so uh, you know what percentage you got on the quiz. Remember, top score only is what counts. So you could take it twice. All right. Let's get into the Mask of the Red Death. So this is a short story by Edgar Allan Poe. We're going to be doing a lot of Poe during this um, little semester here because I like Poe. He does a lot of great stuff with work. But Mask of the Red Death is very, very uh, apropos for kind of what's going on today. Uh, this is a story. It's only about seven pages long. But what happens in the story is basically there's a disease going out throughout all the land. Um, and people are very afraid of it. And uh, this prince, because he thinks he has money, has locked himself in his castle with his closest thousand friends. Okay, And he's going to put on this ball to celebrate the fact that they're going to live. And uh, the disease that is spreading all over the place is called the Red Death. And it comes on very quickly. It kills you very quickly. And the way everybody can tell that you've died of it is you have a blood red face. All the uh, blood in your face comes to the surface at the end. And so they call it the mask because it's like you're wearing a red mask, mask of the red death. This has direct um, influence from the black death that plagued Europe throughout the late 1400s. Um, there's been a lot of hype around Black Death about what caused it, but basically it passed from person to person very easily. And uh, people were like dying on the end of the road and people, other people just walk around them because they were so afraid of catching uh, the plague, the Black Death. Highly contagious um, and very, very deadly. I think it killed a quarter of all Europe's um, population at the time. So that's a lot of people dying. Um, it has, um, similarities to other pandemics that you can think of the Spanish flu of 1918, uh, that was after post time. So he wouldn't have been influenced by it. Um, and definitely has some shades of COVID-19 that's going on today, right? Like what's the, the first thing that happened when COVID-19 was spreading? Like we quarantined, right? We kept to ourselves, uh, safer at home type of stuff. Same thing would have been going on there, except medicine wasn't advanced, so people were literally dying left and right. And it was a mystery as to how you are getting uh, the disease, right? And it, even with COVID-19 today, like we know it spreads through coughs and uh, direct person-to-person -person contact. And we know it can, it can be caught from um, touching objects and like not washing your hands and touching your face. Uh, not as much as we thought at the beginning, but... They're scientific processes, right? Like we can actually study it now. Um, we know that wearing a mask helps. We know that not going outside and touching everything or being in large crowds help. We also know that there are inexplicably people who are carriers of it that have absolutely no symptoms but can totally spread it. And um, we're kind of understanding why that is. It has to do with uh, your immunity and your immune system. Uh, but back then, think about it. If you were the only person in a family who didn't catch and die of this horrible disease and everybody else around you is, 
like demon possession and oh my gosh you must be you know sacrificing animals to the devil because that's the first thing that they ran to right this superstition or oh my gosh you must be a witch so there were always other means because they didn't have the scientific means of actually um thinking these things through and understanding them like we do today uh yet funnily enough the same thing that prospero did was hold himself up in his castle and uh, wait it out is kind of what we're doing today. So lots of parallels, right? Uh, like I said, it caused widespread uh, panic. People were literally dying in the street during this story. So um, you can imagine the fear that was driving them to do it. Uh, the prince's name, Prospero, means prosperous, like healthy and rich. Um, you know, it, it kind of works against him on this. Uh, so we, Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, the author, is really good at setting up contrasts, right? He's contrasting the prince's name, Prosperous, with basically all of his people dying. He's uh, the Prosperous Prince, Prospero, is throwing a party. And this party atmosphere directly uh, contrasts with the death literally happening outside his walls. Um he had a huge castle with a lot of property and he guarded all his gates to make sure his guests would be safe. Um, he, they talk about this party that's going to happen, right? And it's done. It, he makes a big to do because, you know, they're going to survive and he's awesome. And this is what he's going to do with his thousand friends while other people are dying. He's going to have this party. And it goes into great detail about where the party is being held. And it's held in a series of halls or small rooms that break off onto a larger room. And each of these was colored in a certain decor, right? Um, there's seven rooms in all. And the way that these rooms are connected is that you, when you're in one room, you can barely see into the next room. And so they were at all these funny angles. So there's not like one long view you can take. They're all connected, they all lead around, and it kind of gives the impression of being stuck inside somewhere, like you can't get out, right? And the feeling of not being able to get out is contrasted with the fact that they literally cannot get out of, you know, the prince's castle for their safety. Um, the significance of the seven rooms uh, is really brought up in the last room uh, and the colors that are used. Each room is... The windows are tinted a certain color, and they lead from one to the next. And the order is um, blue, purple, green, orange, white, violet, and then black uh, with scarlet windows in the last. So every room, the furniture and the windows are the same color. So the blue room has blue furniture, blue carpet, blue tapestries, and blue windows. And the fact that you're walking through these is eerie because it changes your perspective on everything. It also lines the rooms up from east to west. And if you think about that symbolism, east to west, it does a lot. The sun uh, rises in the east and it sets in the west. The direct comparison would be somebody's life. Somebody's life begins in the east and ends in the west. It is the traveling of uh, the sun that closes the day right? Your day starts when the sun rises in the east, it ends when it sets in the west. Same thing here, it can be an analogy for your life as you move through these rooms, you're going from birth to death. Lots of death symbolism, obviously, Mask of the Red Death, right? The uh, last room is black, so all the furniture is black, the tapestries are black, but the windows are scarlet, and in that room lies a huge ebony black clock. Okay, obviously, you can draw the same parallels to the clock. Whenever you see a clock or time or the sun in something, what does that signify? Usually life and death. Okay, your, your life ticking away, counting down. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, last room. The last room is so disturbing that not many people walk in because think about it. You're in a black room. Black signifies death. You have red windows, and as soon as you walk in, the light coming in does what to you? Turns you red. What's the, the, the significance there? Well, everybody who dies of the red death has a red face, so it creeps people out. They don't really want to enter it, 
and uh, they kind of stay out of there. So that's like the one empty room in the whole place. Um, the same thing traveling east to west, the, the clock on the wall, the counting of the, the hours, all leads into one thing and it's one of the wider themes like no matter what we do no matter how we try and protect ourselves uh no matter how well we live no matter what we eat like death is coming death is inevitable it's gonna happen no matter what we do to prevent it and this is an extreme case in the story like prospero got this castle and he's guarding against it and it's still gonna find its way in um and death will always find you like that that's the great equalizer right so that's one of the wider themes in the story so while the story is going on uh every hour the music kind of stops as the clock in the last room goes off and counts the hours and it makes it really eerie because everybody kind of just stops and takes notice that this clock is going off um it's ticking closer and closer to the end, right? That's that's the symbolism going on there. Uh, Poe talks about the 3,600 seconds of the time that flies. So every time the hour, that's 3,600 seconds, it counts down. So the party is a masquerade type of party. So uh, it's supposed to be having fun and you're supposed to dress, um, you know, to have a good time, funny costumes, but all the costumes that are described are often more grotesque. Uh, there is much glare and glitter and piquancy and phantasm going on. So even though it's supposed to be happy and gay, there's more horror and grotesque going on with the costumes that um, kind of symbolizes exactly where this is going, right? So a guest shows up close to midnight. Uh, it's more fantastic than, all, than them all. He is horrendous uh, by comparison. He appears at midnight, symbolic, right? What's midnight? Midnight's the end of the day. Uh, it's also an analogy for the end of life. At the end of the day, dies. So um, the costumes strike notes of terror, horror, and disgust. The figure is shrouded head to foot by habiliments of the grave. So he's got like a death shroud on, like white shroud that you would be covered in to be put into your casket. The mask is that of a corpse that died from the Red Death. So, I mean, this guy's taking it to the next level, right? You always got that one person at the party that takes it way too far. This is the guy that takes it way too far. The entire outfit is sprinkled with blood. So, obviously symbolism. Prospero sees him and he gets really, really pissed off, right? Like, who's this guy ruining my party? What does he think he's doing? He's the prince. He's used to getting his way. He pulls, he orders the guy, sees him, let's kick him out. Let's, you know, get rid of him. He's not vibing with the party. Uh, nobody wants to seize him because nobody is quite sure what's going on. They don't know if he has Red Death or not. They don't really want to catch it. So even though Prospero is the prince and he's in charge, um, this guy, the way he looks and the way he's dressed has really freaked everybody out. Everybody's afraid. Nobody wants to touch him. And what the guy does is he starts walking through the rooms towards the clock. And the clock starts chiming at this point, right? So Prospero takes his dagger out and he's following behind him. And uh, he stalks him through all six chambers, the light changing. But as he approaches, uh, the guy goes into the last chamber. Prospero comes in. The guy turns around. Prospero goes to stab the guy, right? But instead, his knife stops short, and Prospero falls dead. And when they look at him, he's got the red face, and he's died of basically the red death. The one thing he tried to hide from has come after him, caught up with him, and even Prospero, the prince, could not conquer uh, death, which is manifested by this partygoer in, you know, the horrible mask. Obviously, this happens right as the clock strikes midnight, like it's a great convergence of all these things coming together. And uh, the symbolism is no matter what Prospero did, he couldn't escape death. One by one, all of his party goers start dropping dead. If you're looking at the picture in uh, here, that's basically what, what's going on, right? This guy, uh, probably not dressed exactly like it's described, but this guy's 
uh, Red Death, The Time is Midnight, The Scarlet Windows, uh, this is Prospero on the ground, he's got his dagger out but can't do anything, and then these represent the party goers in each hey, of the rooms. I'm having trouble hearing you. Each of the party goers, that's my, my watch, each of the party goers in the rooms is dying of the Red Death after Prospero has died. At the end of the story, it's like one by one all of them drop and the Red Death holds illimitable dominion overall. Okay, lots of colors going on, lots of symbolism going east to west, uh, lots of inevitability of death, and lots of no matter kind of what we do, um, it's kind of inevitable. Doesn't mean not to live your life as a fullest, that's not what Poe's talking about, but it is about sometimes no matter all of our preparations, whatever's going to happen is still going to happen. All right, uh, that's it for Red Death today. Let's go back to our team's view. There it is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and push out your assignment right now of your quiz so you can get started. Uh, let's see. The work from Red Death. Where is it? Paul, low cap test, most dangerous game. I pushed it out really early. Remember, all of the lectures are saved and published in the feed, so if you miss anything or you want to go back and look, you, you always can. Wow, okay. I can't find it. Let's just go over to assignments. Why can't I find Red Death? Sorry, guys. Oh, there it is. It's a short story, too. I'm going to do it. All right. So let's look at the student view. So Red Death, here is the text. You click on the text, it opens the text, okay? Red Death work, click on the work, it will open the work. Just, you don't have to uh, fill it in here. Fill it in on, keep this open. Fill it in on this sheet right here, okay? Hit edit, start typing the answers. All I need are the answers, I don't need the answers and the questions that's a little much but make sure you get those done um, you can do it in your groups I don't care you can do your novel work in your groups I don't care uh, I just got to make sure it's done by the end of the week if you guys have any questions on anything that I've gone over or any of the assignments uh, just hit me up in chat I know most of you are doing that anyways uh, thank you for that um, and that's how we're gonna be communicating when you need help I am pushing out your night vocab quiz right now. Uh, get together within your groups and uh, in your novel groups. Go over your study guide before you go take it and then go ahead and go take your quiz. I'm going to hit done. I'm going to assign it. There you go. Followed into the quizzes. It should be coming up pretty soon on your posts. Um, unless you have any questions, there's no reason to stay here. Off to your novel groups. Let's look at the activities, see if I have anything. Nope, it's there. All right, guys, off to your novel groups. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll be in this meeting. Have a good day.